Shabbat Shalom, everybody, and you are welcome to the Shabbat of this morning. The parasha that, 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 that we have this morning is called Parasha Mike. And Mike's meaning at the end. At the end of what thing. Remember, the Torah gave us the understanding that there is beginning for everything and there is end for everything. Everything that has a beginning has an end. There is, uh, there is um, uh, a kind of a song uh, in our Siddur that is called, let, uh, let me see if I can remember it quick, quick now. It says, okay, uh, it's, I think it's in the, yes, it is just a minute. Uh, let me see, what is it now? <coughs> okay, in, the, uh, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in page 81 of a Siddur, there is a song that is called Adonolan. So that song, we are going to sing it at the end, to, uh, today. That song gives us a kind of understanding. So yes, uh, at Arab Shabbat, I was telling some people, say, anything that has a beginning has an end. So I was telling, uh, we were discussing, I was telling them, do you know that the angel has an end? People say, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and the song gave us understanding, I said it, because the angel has a beginning. They were created, they have a beginning. And anything that has a beginning has an end. And in the song, it said, at the end of all things, only the Holy One, blessed be He, will remain in splendor. Because the Holy One, blessed be He, has no beginning and it has no end. He's the only one that has no beginning and He's the only one that has no end. Only the Holy One, blessed be He, will remain forever and ever. Everything that has beginning has an end. What am I saying this morning? I am saying that that problem that you think that you have has a beginning, but that problem has an end. There will be an end to it this morning, only if you focus your mind. That situation, that emo emotional uh, uh, roller coaster that you think that you have, that they, no, nobody can cure you, nobody it cannot be removed, you are, oh man, this is the, this is the end. That you think for yourself, but God is saying, no, you are not going to die. But you will live. But remember, there is an end to everything. So we are going to see and we are going to discuss about uh, the parallel between the Messiah and the parallel between the Messiah and Joseph. So I'm going to give us that understanding also this morning. The subtitle that I subtitle the parasha of this morning is Joseph the Messiah. Joseph was the Messiah to the people to his brethren, to the people of Israel, to the Hebrew people, on the day when he, he, he brought them into the land of Egypt to feed them, to sustain them. He was the Messiah. Because if not because of him, they would have perished with hunger, with famine. So, before uh, the, um, the, the, uh, to the uh, go into the Torah of this morning, I mean to the study actually of this morning, I want us to look at the, the, the Rashi of this week. What does Rashi uh, talk, talk, uh, talk about concerning the parasha Mekes of this week? Rashi said that deep into the family in Canaan, we are told in court. And Jacob saw that they were selling corn in Egypt. Genesis, Bereshit, chapter 42, verse 1. So the question now is this. How did he see? How did Jacob see if Jacob is in Canaan? And, he see, and the Torah is saying that he saw that there was corn in Egypt. How did he see? Because Jacob, as, as I know, is not an angel. And Jacob cannot fly in the speed in the speed of light and see, oh, I saw Mistraim and everything that is going on in what? In Israel. Jacob, as I understood, as I know, Jacob is not God. It's not that he's present everywhere. No, he's a human being like me and you. So why did the Torah give us the statement? And Jacob saw, right? That there was corn in Egypt. He could have, uh, if he could not have seen Egypt, that is. That is for sure, because it's not God. But he might have heard about it. He might have heard that, okay, you know, yeah, there is corn in Egypt. So the question now is, why did the Torah say he heard? Why did the Torah use the word, he see? Right? The, the Torah is, that it's not, it, 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 it's not a mistake. It is deliberately written like that in Torah. 
Right? So why did the Torahs use this word? In the text, uh, in the next text, he tells his sons, Behold, I have heard. You see? In the next text, Jacob Abenu told his sons, I have heard. But in the beginning, they say, and he saw. So what is the difference between the seeing and hearing? Right? So, behold, I have heard. Then, why did he or the Torah begin by saying, and Jacob saw? Why, did, why such a statement? To show us that Jacob had a faint holy vision that there were hope for him in Egypt. But he did not have a true prophetic prophecy telling him that it was Yosef in whom his hope rested. That is in, the, uh, in, in Genesis Rabbah 91, in the Talmud. Genesis Rabbah 91. So, this is it. Joseph had understanding. Ah, sorry. Jacob Abenu had an understanding. Maybe true prophecy or true God vision or true uh, uh, with high advanced wisdom. He knew that in Egypt, that is where my hope is. He knew that in Egypt, I will survive. He knew that in Egypt, that is where God is going to make me into something special. But it's not 100% clear. It's not 100% known, but he has that faith, that faith, that faith that, faith that God is having plan for me in Egypt. But he didn't know that actually that plan was what? Was his son, Joseph. He didn't know. So that is why the Torah said, and he saw, or he see, right? But not using the word ah, in that, that, that he had. You know? In the next verse, he said, and he had. But in the first one, he said, he saw. So this is the differences that we have to understand. So, now going deep into the message of this morning. Parasha, Mekes. Joseph, the Mashiach. The end. It was the action of order that brought about the event in Joseph's life that would shape his destiny. Joseph seems to have no control over his tomorrow. He flutter on the wing of the wing of others. As a teenager, Joseph was not exactly popular with his brothers, as we know that last week, right? They don't like him. And he came at, uh, and he and he comes across as an arrogant due to Jacob's being an overdoting father, right? As, uh, as with Jacob, Joseph needed to undergo and overcome various trials as well as tribulation. He wasn't popular among his brethren. He don't, you, no, nobody likes him. He, they thought he was what? Arrogant. Uh, but if we look at, you know, a teenager, he's just 17 years old, yeah, that's their life, you know. If, if we look at our children, if all of us remember when we were 17, 16, 18, 19 years old, we thought that the world is, uh, uh, that we can control the world, right? We thought in our head that, oh, I am invisible. Our parents will tell us, don't do this. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Don't. Our parents are worried, but we don't care because we think that nothing can happen to, to us. You know, that is a teenager kind of life, you know. You know, they are they, 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 filled of life. You know, they want to show themselves up. It is, it is normal. So if Joseph behaved like this, it was normal, you know. But his brethren saw it in a different light. They saw that, oh, he's the most beloved of our, of our father. Our father even, he, he even specially designed a cloth of different co color for him. And for us, he did nothing, right? But I mean, what, what a spoiled child. Ah, he's a, a spoiled one, you know, who will deal with him, who will teach him a lesson, who will let him know who is the boss, right? So, this is, you know, it, 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 it's, a, it's, it's a character of the teenagers, and which we have as a, as a I mean, uh, as a child of God, as, as parents, we have also passed through those stages, and we can bear witness to all those kind of, of stages. So, now, so we need to see that Joseph, uh, 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 Joseph the righteous, has to undergo what is called tribulation and trial to make him the man who he becomes. Every children of God, if for you to, to stand firm, to be actually, uh, I mean, to be the, the woman, the man that God has called you to become, you have to pass through some uncomfortability. You know, it's, it's not co comfortable. Remember? Yeshua said, the road is tiny. The road is not comfortable. It's, it's, it's tough, right? 
it's a lot of you know a lot of scars because it's so tiny, you know, that you have to pass through. But remember, at the end, remember, it's always the end. At the end of the tunnel, there's always a light. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel. It might look dark. It might look uh, uncomfortable because I cannot see anything. But remember, as we said in Hanukkah, the light, the eternal light, is guiding you, teaching you, guiding you on, on this path. So this is what I want us to, to, uh, to understand and take home this morning. It was Joseph's struggle that enabled him to grow as an individual and grasp firmly his own destiny. If not because of his struggle, he wouldn't have become the person that he becomes Joseph, he wouldn't have become that person, but it was because of the trial, it was because of those temptations, it was because of all the things that he passed through as a human being that make him who he becomes. It makes him to grab his destiny, that like, this is my destiny, and I, have to, uh, and I have to follow it until the end. Most of us, you know, we say, ah, what is my destiny? How do I define my destiny? How do I know my destiny? Of course, you can know your destiny through the process of your life, through what you are passing through. You can be able to grasp what actually God is intending for me in my life. What do I suppose to do? We are talking about that Joseph was a dreamer, right? He dreamt a dream, right? From when he was young, right? So what Joseph, an inter to be a dreamer is different from being an interpreter of a dream. Everybody dreams, no? We all dreams. But well, can we interpret our dreams? That is the question. Everybody dreams. Even the dog dreams. A pig dreams. Every animal dreams. But the issue here now is, can we, as a human being, interpret our dream? Because interpretation belongs to him, the Holy One, blessed be he. The interpretation of dream. Dream is a warning. As said, it gives us the understanding that dream is like this. When a man is tired, and you sleep, your soul goes off to the heaven to go and recharge. So when the soul is, for example, is plugged into the electricity, I, I mean, uh, uh, for the, to the main computer up there, the soul sees a lot of things that is happening, that is, that is happening. So when the soul is fully charged and is turning back, it takes to, with him or her, I mean, that soul, all the things that it sees. And that is what we interpret as a dream. You see that. So you are able to go into the future. You are able to go backward. And you are able to understand the present. That is a dream. A dream is about the future, what is not happening. A dream is about the past, what has happened. The dream is about what is present, what is happening. Now you can go, oh, okay, I'm having a dream. I don't understand. Oh, I understand. So how did Joseph, the righteous, now understand how to interpret a dream? That is the question. Because everybody dreams, but not everybody can interpret a dream. Mm -hmm. We understand very well that he learned this understanding from who? From Jacob Avenu, from his father. His father was a dreamer too. His father dreamed. And behold and lo, there was ladder that stretched from the heaven, uh, from the earth unto the heaven. So who interpreted that dream? To Jacob. Nobody. But Jacob understood that dream perfectly well. Mm -hmm. But the Holy One, blessed be He, gave him that understanding. Mm -hmm. And Jacob Avenu, because he loved Joseph a lot, was as imparted a lot of knowledge of our dream unto Joseph. Mm -hmm. And Joseph was able to understand how to interpret dreams. Mm -hmm. It was a kind of a gift. You know, remember, people had gifts from God, natural gifts. Everybody, individual, every, each and every one of us, we have our different kinds of gifts. Everybody. But I want, to ask, I want to tell you that a dream, uh, a gift is like a muscle. A muscle. Mm -hmm. Right? If you don't exercise your muscle, your muscle dies. You have to exercise it. You have to do exercise. Or the same thing, your neurons. The neurons in your brain. If you don't really understand those neurons, they become the, the, the intact to be weak. Right? You need to understand that. The same thing here. Joseph has a word, a gift. But he needs to use those gifts. He needs to interact. He needs to exercise those those gifts, right? So each and every one of us that has a gift, if you don't exercise your gift, it's of no good. It's of, it's of no use to you because you are not able to exercise it and make it perfect. 
right? So this is the same thing. Joseph was able to interpret the dreams of the uh, of the um, the cup bearer and also of the uh, the other ones, um, the the baker, right? So so, but the the question now is, were those the only uh, dreams that Joseph, I mean, interpreted in Egypt? Maybe not. Maybe Joseph has, has interpreted thousands and thousands of dreams in Egypt. But this two or this one that was written in the Torah was the main actual one that brought him into recognition. The main important one that brought him into power. So that is why the Torah wrote about it, so that we can understand. But maybe a, a lot of prisoners were there. Maybe they have the dream and Joseph, you know, interpreted it to them one by one. Exercising his understanding, even though I am in dungeon. You know, a dungeon, a dungeon is not a prison. I give us the understanding of a dungeon. A dungeon in those days is a pit. They dig a pit, a pit, down, 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 and they put them inside. Maybe like 10 feet, or maybe like uh, 5 meters, or maybe like 10 meters. They put people and they cover it. They put an iron over it. That, that's, a, that, that's a dungeon. Not like uh, the one that you have here now in the 21st century. That it, it, it's like a hotel, you know? They have a TV, internet. They have, they have food, they give them everything, you know, and everything is hunky dory. They don't even do nothing. They relax. They will tell they will tell the people that the food is not good. A criminal, even complaining, a criminal has the right to even sue the government that the, that I don't have an internet in my I mean in my room. Where's the sense? It doesn't make sense, no? That is it. But in those days, it was being like that. So Joseph will have interpreted a lot of dreams to other prisoners exercising this gift. So, let's see. Just as Joseph, just as Joseph brother sought to take Joseph's life, ah, sorry, just as Jacob brother sought to take Jacob's life, I mean, Esau, I want, I want to tell us, to show us the parallel, all right, between Jacob's life and his son, Joseph. Just as Jacob's brother sought to take uh, Jacob's life, so Joseph's brother desired to take his life too. Why Jacob flee from his home? Joseph is torn from his home. As Jacob spent 14 years in service for Rahel and Leah due to Laban's deception, so Joseph spent 13 to 14 years in, in, what, in prison on account of a deceiving woman. Trial and tribulation are the building blocks of destiny where the descendants of Abraham are concerned. We can see this in all the children of Abraham are being. It is all about trial. It's all about deception. It's all about a kind of a trick that builds their destiny one by one. Jacob, brother, our father Jacob, his brother Esau, wanted to kill him, no? Yes, they ran away. The same thing, Joseph, the righteous. His brother wanted to kill him. Okay, Jacob had been run away from his house. But in the case of Joseph, he was torn away from his own house. They sold him into slavery by force. They said, you know, the dreamer is coming. Mm. Yes, we, we deal with him. Those is gonna, gonna, gonna dream that he's thinking he, he's dreaming, today will be the end. So we sell him and, oh, no, 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 we will kill him. One, one, one to kill him at the end of the dream. Yeah, one, one, one of the brothers said, oh, no, 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 don't let us kill him. Let us just, you know, put him in, 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 in the pit. You know, but having his mind, I will take him later and return to his father. And the Ishmael like, will come, oh, why do you want to kill him? If we kill him, there is no gain. But if we sell him, we can make some cash. We can make some dollar, you know. <laughs> Let's sell him and make some dollar. Well, that is what everybody knows now. Everything is all about what? Money, 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 money. Right? So let's tell him and make some dollars for ourselves. Maybe we can go and buy some cow, buy some sheep, buy some goats. No? With that money. Or to, to help our own family with that money. And they all agree and they sold him. Not knowing that actually they are not selling him, they are, they, they are helping him to reach his goal. Right? Your enemy, our enemies, think that he's doing us harm. They think that they are hurting you. They think that they are hurting me. Actually, they are not hurting you, they are not hurting us. They are helping us to reach our destiny. The brothers of Joseph, they helped him to reach his destiny. 
It seems that, oh, we are going to sell him, that is the end. But actually, that is his destiny, to become the prince of Egypt. To become the vice royal of Egypt. They think that, oh, that is it. We, we will never hear about him again. Sikini, as the French said, no? But so step by step. So the, your enemy will say, oh, this is the end. I, I have finished them all. But God is saying, no. Actually, this is the beginning of your success. This is the beginning of your glory. This is the beginning of your blessing. So we need to have that in our mind. You have one perspective. You should always have a positive perspective. Never you allow your perspective to go negative. Never you allow your perspective to go wrong. No, always have a positive perspective. And that positivity will lead you. So the same thing like Joseph. Joseph even told his brother, what we are going to see later on in our parasha, I mean in order of our parasha. Don't worry. It is not you that sold me. No, actually that is the plan of God. You see, from the perspective that which Joseph, the righteous, is speaking. He's not speaking as, with anger, with pain. Right? Yes, he might have said like that, which is true. As a human being, we are all human beings. But he's seen it from different perspectives, from the positive side. That if not because you sold me, you will all have died. If not because that you sold me, you will not you you won't be here surviving under my control. See, so this is this is what I want us to always to understand. So now Seeing this perfectly well, we can also understand, the, we, we can find the parallel between Joseph, the righteous, and Yeshua, Hamashiach. That is what I, I want to say. We can see that one, that, uh, uh, that, that Joseph, uh, uh, Joseph the, the righteous, was rejected by his brother. No? Was rejected. We don't need him. We don't want him. Cast him away. Right? But we can also see that Yeshua was re rejected not by the people because people don't understand. People say, oh, the, the, the Jews said Yeshua. No, 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 that was a lie. That was a pure lie. The Jews never hate Yeshua, no. The, the, actually, the Jews want him to be the king. It is the leader that hates him. The leadership, they don't want him. The leadership rejected him. The same thing with Joseph, the righteous. Re Joseph Abenu, here it is, right? The, the, the household of Jacob Abenu, they love Joseph. But the leader, the son, his brother, they hate him. Because they think he's going to dominate them. Right? It is, it's all about the leadership. It's not the people. Remember, okay, we say, when, before, before, Trudeau became, I'll give an example, before Trudeau became the prime minister, right? If you see, if you see Trudeau in, uh, for example, in Cuba, who is he? He's nobody. He ain't just one Canadian. No, I don't care about him. But when you, if Trudeau now go to, to Cuba, what was it? Oh, the Canadian prime minister. So Trudeau is, is, is the face of Canada. But for example, maybe I didn't vote for him. Maybe somebody didn't vote for him. Or maybe I voted for him. That doesn't matter. But as, as far as he's the leader, he's the leader. So he's the face of the country. They say, oh, they can't, ah, they can't, they can't. But when we, before he became a prime minister, he's nobody. He's just a guy, the man being on the streets. I don't care. So this is the same thing. The leadership is the face of the country. So the leadership at that time, they don't like Yeshua because they think that he's taking authority from them. Mm -hmm. He's taking power from them. And all of about this is all about power. It's all about control. So let's see. Again, we can see that, as I said, that Yeshua, that his brothers are the ones that hate him. Those in, in what? In leadership. The fellow Jew. You know, not the Gentiles. Okay, let's see. It's an, another one here is about the disguise of who? Of Joseph the righteous. We can see in the Torah, the Torah gives state explicitly saying that. And when they brought Joseph out of the dungeon, what, what did the, the Torah say? The Torah, and they do what? They shaved him. When they brought Joseph out of the dungeon, they changed his clothes and they shaved him. What does that mean? That means that jo Joseph was, had, was, was having beard. He was a Hebrew man. And they said, oh, the evil, the, 
the one there I said, Oh, I remember my sin. There was a Hebrew boy in the dungeon that, is, that interpreted my dream. He didn't, he didn't say an Egyptian. He said a Hebrew boy that interpreted my dream. And that guy can interpret your dream. Right? So they brought him and they shaved him. What, why did they shave him? Why? He's a Hebrew man. We always have our beard. It's our tradition. It is good for us because we have interpretation, we have understanding of what is the meaning of beards. But they have to make him to look like an Egyptian. They change his clothes, they change him, they put pain. Not, not, people think that it is only women that put pain. No, no, no. In Egypt, both men are women. Yeah. They put pain, they paint that in the everything, they make him to look like an Egyptian. And they gave him another name. So that nobody will know that he is a Hebrew man. The same thing with Yeshua, Hamashiach. They brought him out. I said, oh, no, 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 no. His color is too dark. Let's make him a Roman man. So let's give him a blue eyes. And let's make his nose point. And make his hair long, like a what? Like a woman. And make him sexy. Hey, you know, that is good. Now so that people can do what? Fall in love with him. And change his clothes. And change everything. So if you bring such a man to me as a Hebrew person, and you say, Oh, this is your Messiah, of course, I've said no because I don't know him. Just like the brother of Joseph does not recognize him. Because he has become an Egyptian in their face. He has no beard. Everything is cracked up. Of course, the brother saw an Egyptian, not a Hebrew man. And if you not tell his brother, Oh, I am a Hebrew person, they look at him, Are you cuckoo? Where is your beard? How can I recognize you? I don't know you. The same thing which uh, you are saying that the, that, that the Jews don't like Yeshua. Who, who, who is telling you that? I don't recognize him. That's what I'm saying. I don't know him. I don't know this man. Because I know for sure that the Hebrew people has brown eyes. Why are you giving me a man with a blue eyes or a green eyes? And a man that is completely white, which I don't recognize. I don't know. I want you to recognize this one as the Savior or, or, or as what? Are you out of your mind? I will never recognize that because I don't know him. That is the issue. They don't, they do not recognize their brother because he was shaved. So let's see more and more that the parallel between was you was was uh, uh, Joseph a born prince? Yes, a few say no. Our father Abraham was uh, was the king, you know. I mean, he was, even though he was not actually a, 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 true, a true king, you know, but he was the one controlling his own, his own, I mean, his own, uh, all, all the people that he asked. He was like a, a king. But he had like 450 men, not apart from the women, apart, apart from the children that he was controlling, right? He was like, like, a, like a king, you know, of a town, you know. So, but in one, in, in one side, he doesn't have a town of his own because he was a nomad moving from one place. To another, right in the land of Canaan. But in this case, was a, was Joseph a prince? No. But Pharaoh made Joseph a prince. Just uh, Pharaoh made Joseph a prince of Egypt. Even though if he doesn't have, uh, a, 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 I mean, the blood of the prince in him or the blood of the king, but Pharaoh made him the prince of Egypt. So here we see. That even though the Messiah, as I said, he said, right, that he has to, uh, the, the, that the Messiah has to come from the from the root of who, from the root of that um, of um, uh, of, uh, uh, of from the root of uh, of Judah, from the tribe of Judah, and it, it, it doesn't matter if, it, if they say that has to be from Judah and his mama from the tribe of Dan. That is what the, the sages is saying. That the Messiah, the Messiah, we are, you know, remember I told you that we have all kinds of Messiah. Right? In every generation, there's always a Savior. In every generation, there's always a Messiah. But I'm talking about the Messiah, the one, the anointed one. The, the, I said he said that his father must come from the root of David, who's a, who, who's a Yehudin, right? Who's a Yehudin. And the mama must come from the least, which is what? Down. So this is making it what balance from the least to the highest. 
So it's, it, 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 that, that, that's what they say. And that's why they're saying, no, 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 that uh, Yeshua is not uh, a Messiah because his mama is not, is not from Dan. So, but that is their own understanding. That is what they, that is the way they, they, they interpreted, I mean, the, uh, the, the Torah. But what I'm saying here is, is this, that the Messiah that is this guy, I mean, they disguise him, they remove his, 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 his what, the, the, the Hebrewness in him. They remove everything that can make me as an Hebrew man mm -hmm. to see, oh, this is, this is my brother. This is a person like me. This is, uh, actually, we are one. When they remove all those things, the, I'm talking about the physical appearance. When they remove the, the physical appearance, how can I recognize him? I can't. And I will never recognize such a person. It's like you in your town, in your kingdom, or in your in your village. It doesn't matter. Somebody come from South Africa or from Ethiopia and say, say I'm coming to, to Nicaragua or to Mexico, right? To become the king of Mexico. Would the would the Mexican allow that? That will never happen. Because they don't know him. Because he's a foreigner. How can the foreigner become a god over, I mean, I mean a, a god or a king over us? What well, we have our own kinship. No, that is it. So this is the situation that is happening that we have to understand. I will never allow a foreigner to become a king over me because I don't know him. We have the root of my own kingdom. About David from all of them, Shlomo, you know, down, down, down. We have all those truth. Not a person that I don't recognize that I don't know. So we have to understand the truth about this. Joseph coming to power is achieved through the action of men other than himself. For it is Pharaoh's cup bearer who brings uh, Joseph to Pharaoh's attention, not only that, uh, that uh, Joseph's work, gifts, and knowledge also play a part. As if not his skill in dream interpretation, Pharaoh's cup bearer wouldn't have noticed him. But be behind the action of men are the working of God. It is the Holy One, blessed be He, who brings the event that will mold Joseph into the man he needs to be, uh, 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 needs to be into being. It's not, I uh, thought it, so it, it was the, hope, the, 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 the Holy One, blessed be He, who placed the dream within the sheep baker, cup bearer, and parent. And it was He who gave Joseph the ability to accurately interpret these dreams. Remember, the Torah said, and Pharaoh had a dream. And if someone who, all the necromancer, all the wise men of Egypt, and none could interpret it. Right? Do you think that is actually true? It depends. The people could not interpret. Why? You know what it's called? Wise men? These are men that understand the stars. These are men, these are astrologers. These are men that interpret anything. These are men that have the spirit of God in them. But still, they could not interpret the dream. Why? There's something going on here. Even though, even if we look at in the history of Joseph, how many times did they mention the name of God? We know that in, in the first thing, the, uh, 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 in, in just a few times, they mentioned the name of God in the life of Joseph. Telling us this, just like the miracle that happened in what in the in the times of Hanukkah, that God was working on the ground to bring up Joseph. Joseph, the, in the, the, the name of God was mentioned when you, 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 Joseph met Pharaoh. Uh, he said, "It is not me that interpret dreams, but the Holy One will answer who Pharaoh." God name was mentioned in that one. The second part was when Joseph, when the, the, the wife of Potiphar wanted to drag him, he said, oh, why should I do this against God? And again, my master, I, the man does not deserve this. I cannot do this wickedness against God and against my master. Those are the only two times you can see. But we can see that God was raising Joseph from the underground. Bringing him up gradually, 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 gradually. Right? So, this is what I am saying that the life of Joseph was a completely a miracle. The enemy wants to stop it. 
the enemy want to destroy it, but they, 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 what, what they don't understand was actually that they are helping him to reach his goal. Right? That is one thing I want us to understand. So the, the dreamer, the, the dream of, your, uh, of Pharaoh were, were what? Were blocked by God. God blindfolded all the wise men of Egypt. God did it intentionally so that those wise men could not interpret the dream. Because it is time for Joseph to come up. It is time for Joseph to rise. You see? It's very important eh? that is because I cannot tell that those men that cannot interpret it. They can, but God intentionally blocked their intelligence, their eyes, their understanding. So that Joseph can come up because it is time. That is always the end of everything. The end of the pain of Joseph has come. I mean, you know how many years he spent, he spent in the dungeon? But having faith, standing firm, I will not deny God. Instead of me to go and sleep with my master's wife, two seconds, I enjoy myself and I, and, and I condemn myself to Esther. To eternity of destruction. Why do I want to enjoy myself in two seconds and the rest of my eternity is destroyed? Why? For so he stood firm. Even though he went to the dungeon, he believed in his God. The God, you are able to raise me up. From the bottom of the feet, from the bottom of the hair, God can raise you up again. He is God. That's why we call him God. He can do all things. Right? God that raised Yeshua from the depth of hair is God. So we should, we should understand that, that he can do all things. He did the same thing, he raised Joseph out of the dungeon and make him the prince of Egypt because it is time. Your time has come. It is only you individually and collectively. It is our turn now to claim it that my time has come. My time to rise to success. My time to rise into glory. My time to rise into the person that God has ordained me to, 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 do, to be has come. Nobody can decide that time for you. It is you who can decide that time yourself. God himself will not decide the time for you. God will wait and wait for you when you are sick. When what? When you are serious. When you are ready. <laughs> God's time is come. But when you are not ready, okay, you wait. So it, it depends on each and every one of us. Once we are serious to actually receive his glory, God give it right away. He's there. He's just there at the door. He's just there. It is for you, for me, to do what? To claim it. He's just, he just the blessing, the glory, everything is just down there waiting for me and you. You just have to claim it. You see, the kingdom of God has done violence, and the violent man is taken by force. You need to understand that. It is by force. You have to claim it. You need to go forward and say, it is my time. I'm going to claim it. Nobody will claim it for you, for you yourself, me myself. We only can claim our time. However, it was Joseph, just like his father, who had to traverse and overcome his ordeal, just as I said, in, in, in order to conquer himself. All this thing that the trial is talking about, that he's telling us, is about man, about you, not about God. It's about me, it's about you, it's about man. Man to overcome himself. But your greatest enemy is not the person outside. Your greatest enemy is not your husband. Your greatest enemy is not your wife. Your greatest enemy is not your children. Your greatest enemy is you. You are the greatest enemy of yourself. There's nobody for you. And that's why God said you have to overcome yourself. Joseph overcame himself. He was able to stand firm. So you know, this uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, this uh, woman, uh, you see, want to bring me down, that will never work. I will not go to fuck for that trick. Even though I go into dungeon, I will never deny God. Even though I die, I will not deny God. That is what Jesus is saying. And that is what uh, 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 Job said the same thing. Job said, said, said the same thing. For me, how can I deny God? When his friends were saying, oh, deny God and die. Ah, you're talking too much, la, 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 la. How can I do that? I will not do that. Even though it was, it, it, it was, it was painful, it was hard. Though, as a human being, in flesh, it's tough. Don't let us, because we are not in, in, in what? In Job's shoe. If we put ourselves in Job's shoe, I don't think we can even su survive it. It's tough. Right? Everything I have, wipe away. 
and his sister and fans have not denied God, no matter what. So this is the same principle that Joseph is telling us. The same principle Abraham Avenue told us. Do not deny. Don't only say, I love God, I love God when everything is successful, when everything is good. That's why you love God. But when you have a little pain, oh, you deny God. I don't like God. I don't want God. I don't is that when he, uh, you forget that when everything was good, you shout hallelujah, hallelujah. No? This is what this, you have to overcome yourself. Man is the greatest enemy of himself. So we have to overcome ourselves to be able to be successful in life. And any other thing to be secondary. As you should have said, seek for the kingdom of God. What is the seeking for of the kingdom? The seeking for of the kingdom is denying yourself everything. Making yourself what God wants you to to, to, to be. That is the meaning of the, that, that is the meaning of seeking the kingdom. Joseph seek the kingdom of God, not his own success. You might say, you know what? I stay in in Potiphar's house and die in Potiphar's house. You can sleep with the with the woman and die down there, and the glory will never shine. That is it. Fini. But he said no. The star, the star of Israel, must shine. I will follow the step of my father. At the ten, tender age of 17, he had that mind. His mind was the mind of a thousand years old man. Even though the body might be 17 years old. While his brothers, their body is the body of the 1,000 years old, but their mind is the mind of the baby, chicken. Chicken brain. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say that. But that is a fact. So this is what I am saying, that we have to deny ourselves in order for us to be able to enter into the kingdom. Joseph denied himself everything and he entered into the kingdom. His glory shined. Everything came into being. Even though there were times that Joseph felt abandoned and alone during his long years in prison, the Holy One, blessed be he, was still there guiding his future. Even though he doesn't, even, even though he doesn't know that perfectly well, but even though he knows that perfectly well, I don't know. Like his father, his grandfather, and his great grandfather before him, and just like all of us, Joseph has to pass through this this darkness in order to grow and be ennobly before he could enter the light and bring his destiny into fruition. Yes, sometimes we pass through darkness. But remember, darkness is not the end. No, 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 no. The end is the light. Because when you pass at the other side, it's always light. Even though the scientists said there is a black hole, no? They now understand that actually at the end of that black hole, that's the light. That's the light. The light is, they say, we have a black hole and we have the white hole. At the end of it, it's white. It's light. That's what, that's what they are theorizing. It's a theory. Remember? That is, it is always balanced. The darkness that you might be facing now, you might think it's darkness, but it's a trial. It's a, it's a teaching that God is teaching you. That, come, Father Son, I am, I, I am here with you. Don't look somewhere else. Don't go to the dark side. Don't go to the negative side. Don't go and seek help anywhere. I am your help. I am your salvation. Mm -hmm. That's what God is saying. Come, stay with me. But you have to clear, you have to overcome yourself. Your blessing is just right there. It's not it, it just right, right on your nose. It's, you just take it. But for you to to take it, God will not say, okay, oh now. No, you have to walk. Right? You have to walk for it. It's something free. Understand? Anybody that says something is free, it's lying to you, nothing is free under the sun. You have to work for it. You work for it. Oh, and you take it. Then you can be, you can what? You can now be proud and say hallelujah. Say yes. You can give a testimony. Say to, to others. Say, okay, you know what? When I was in this situation, this situation, just like your own, this is what I did, this is what I did, this is what I did, and God helped me. And everything is this. It can be a, it can be a witness to the rest of the world. Parasha Mikhail. At the end. Joseph, the Messiah. Remember, to every generation, there is a Messiah. And, 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 and the Messiah that is coming is telling us that he's right at the door for us to understand that the Lord is with us. We shall never fail. Shabbat shalom.